So it's been a while since I made a video like this. So I'm going to be showing you guys what I have in a fresh install of Kubuntu. So let's get started. So for the past couple of weeks, I've actually been very busy with personal stuff. So I haven't had a chance to really iron out some video ideas or put down what I want to do, but I have been working on some side projects along the way, now, namely this laptop. This is by far one of my favorite laptops. It still is. I bought this in 2018. It's the Lenovo IdeaPad 530S, and it weighs just about three pounds with about a five hour battery life, fast charging, NVMe, it's got a, a i7 8th generation with a MX150 NVIDIA GPU in here. So it's got uh, the Intel and the dedicated graphic card. So with that in mind and said, this is like my favorite laptop, uh, the way it's built, how light it is, the thin bezels, like everything about it. I actually have more videos about this laptop, but yeah. So the most recent change I did to this laptop was um, upgrading the RAM to 16 gigs. Uh, adding in a one terabyte hard drive, replacing the battery to a brand new battery because the old battery was just dying and replacing the keyboard because the keyboard actually, one row of keys wasn't working. Anyway, I did spend a decent amount of money trying to get this back up to date instead of trying to buy a new one. But I really do like this laptop. I haven't found one that kind of like suits this. I do have a newer laptop. I have an Alienware, but you know what? That's more of a gaming PC and it's heavy. So I rather just carry this around anyway. With all those updates installed, I did do a fresh install of Kubuntu. Originally, I was gonna use Manjaro, but Manjaro doesn't like to play nice with uh, prime GPUs like this, where you have Intel and Nvidia back to back. It's, it's just not nice if you wanna use both the graphic cards at the same time. So that's why I decided to use Ubuntu. So here we are on my desktop. This is stock. I haven't changed any themes yet, which I plan to in the future, and I'll probably make a video because I haven't done a theme video in a while but I do want to show you some of the things that I did do. The first thing I would do anytime I get into Ubuntu now is completely wipe out Firefox from Snap and install it through Ubuntu repositories. So to do this, you actually have to sudo snap remove Firefox. And then the next command is sudo add the repository for Mozilla Firefox team. And then you could do sudo apt install Firefox. So those are the steps that I would take just to swipe it out of uh, Snap. And the reason why I do this is because Snap doesn't work nice or play nice with the default operating system. Anytime that I needed to install KeePass um, or Video Downloader or something that needs interface with the actual operating system, it will not play nice and you will have a hard time configuring it. I mean, you can configure it to get to work, but it's it doesn't play nice. I generally just wipe out Firefox and install the Firefox from Mozilla team instead. Now that's the first, first thing I ever do. The next thing I like to do is install FlatHub. FlatHub is way better than using Snap. I generally try to get everything off Snap and switch over to FlatHub because it gives me the latest uh, versions of software I need and it just works better. So I switch over to installing FlatHub by using this command. And what's cool is after you install FlatHub, you can actually go over to um, kde.org and you could download the back end. So Flatpak Discover back end. This will allow you to search for programs right from the discovery store, which is what I've been using. So anytime if I want to look for something like, well, here's another program that you should install once you install Flatpak, which is called Flat Seal. And this allows you to manage all the Flatpak permissions and add stuff with a GUI interface, so it's much easier. So I would use FlatSeal, and here you go. You can actually install FlatHub packages. And if you wanted to look for something that's, uh, say, Lutris, I could click here. I have Lutris installed, but not through Apt. I actually have it installed through FlatHub. And you could see if I switch the sources, it knows that it's ready installed through FlatHub and Ubuntu. How to enable this is after you install that little backend, you go over to Settings and you could actually add the flat pack repository over here. Now you can make this as default. Right now I have my Ubuntu default source. Uh, if you make this default, then you would see um, the Lutris pop up as uh, installed already, not like how it was before. So it all depends on what you're using it for. If you're gonna use more flat pack packages, then I would change that to default. Next thing I have installed is what I just showed you, which is Lutris. This is by far the only program that I would really use to install any Windows games. Uh, I currently have Diablo installed and Diablo runs pretty good on this machine on the lowest setting possible. Uh, so I actually was able to play this. I'm not gonna do it now, but I get about like 25 frames per second, 20 frames, 20 to 25, depending. If it's Hellfire, it's like 20 frames. And if it's not, then I get like 25, which is pretty decent. 
And I will just group this category together because I will also install Steam. And Steam's another one that I play games off of and I was able to play a decent amount of games, older games because it's an older GPU. So those are the other two things I would install. Now, the most recent thing that I switched over to using, which if you've seen previous videos, I used to love using Gigolo, which is an application to allow you to automatically mount network shares. But because KDE uses their um, Dolphin file browser, and it doesn't use the standard mounting the network share to a specific folder, like uh, GVFS on GNOME, it kind I need that structure to be built so I could actually use my DaVinci Resolve. So what I actually use now is something called SMB4K. And if I was to mount something, which I don't have it auto mount just because if this is mobile, I don't want it to mount to my network share when I'm not even in my own network. But if I go over to bookmarks, I can mount to my nasty thing. And over here, I could just open with file manager and it'll bring me right to my folder, which is home, done, SMB4K, nest, and then it mounts it directly to a specific folder. This way my editing software could be used to reference this folder. So SMB4K is another one that I use for network shares. It actually has other stuff too, but I'm just, I'm just gonna leave you off like that. And last but not least, uh, something called QEMU GUI. Well, it's not, it's called Quick GUI or Quick GUI. And this will allow me to install VMs on a flash, like I could just click it, it'll download everything and install the VM for me. I don't have anything installed as of yet. Uh, I do plan to install Windows 11 on here just in case, because there are particular times where I do need the operating system to work or software that only works with Microsoft and I can't get it to work with Linux. I will have a VM in the background to be able to do that. So I do have a video on uh, Quick MU, which I'll leave a link over here, going into detail of, about the software, which you can actually even install Mac OS using this. So. Yeah, I'm gonna leave a link to that right over here. Otherwise, this is the base space install programs that I really just need generally to get it up and going, which is still not all the software I install because I still didn't talk about my remote desktop sessions that I use, um, notepad programs that I use, something that I would dig into a little bit later, but this is the base setup that I've been using for the past week and a half. In the future, I'm gonna be theming this. Um, I do like to theme my laptops and make it look really flashy and stuff. So I'm gonna be doing a theme and maybe I'll make a video about that. And I'll be adding more software that I generally need to use along the way, like Cura. I use Cura a lot on my laptop. It's just easier to manage and stuff, but I don't have it installed yet. There's a lot of stuff I still don't install, but those are the standard apps that I just showed you that I would get started with. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys have any particular software that you use religiously on Linux, let me know down in the comments below because I want to check it out. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.